What's going on YouTube? Today we're going to talk about introduction to cryptography. So basically, I saw this room released in Troy Hackme as a new room and there are many sections that talk about cryptography here. So what I'm going to do guys, I'm going to discuss the topics that might help you as What's going on YouTube? Today we are going to take a look into What's going on YouTube? Today we are going to talk about cryptography Mainly we're going to give an introduction So basically this room has been released by Troy Hackme recently and it's a very useful room if you want to check it out uh, What we're going to do to maximize the benefit of the learning experience I'm going to divide the uh, whole room into multiple videos where in every video we're going to discuss multiple subjects um, so basically in this video we're going to discuss two important subjects symmetric encryption and asymmetric encryption so basically these two concepts of encryption or types of encryption are very important to grasp upon and understand if you are just getting into cyber security or ethical hacking all right so in these two tasks, we have three questions for each task. Now, the questions of each task tackle the use of the tools or symmetric and asymmetric encryption tools. How mainly there are two, there are many tools, but mainly we're going to discuss two tools: Open SSL and the GPG project. So these two tools can be used to encrypt and decrypt using asymmetric, asymmetric and symmetric encryption. But before using these tools, let's first give you an intro. Now basically what I have done, as you know guys, members of the channel, uh, I have added some updates on the cryptography notes covering the tools that are used in the current scenario. Okay, we're going to use the notes here to solve the tasks, but before using the notes, Let's go back and give you a little bit of introduction on symmetric encryption. So as you know guys, in a nutshell, if you don't want to read all of that, in a nutshell, in the symmetric cryptography or symmetric encryption, we have sender and we have receiver, recipient. So basically the plain text is the piece of information that is to be encrypted. We encrypt the plain text or the secret with a key. The key is known to the sender and the recipient. It's a secret key. So basically both of these parties know the key. But of course outside parties, those who are actually not intended to view the plain text message, don't have the key. So with the simple key, with the same key, we encrypt the plain text or the encrypt the message and at the same time we decrypt the uh, cipher text. So the plain text is the message before encryption. The cipher text is the message after encryption. The plain text is encrypted with the key and the same key is used by the recipient to decrypt the ciphertext in a nutshell. The problem with symmetric encryption is that um, symmetric encryption is not scalable. So if we have, for example, um, 200 uh, people, right, 200 persons I want to communicate, each one of these they want key and the options are limitless. So if you have 200, mainly we're going to need like over 2,000, 3,000 keys. If one of these keys are is lost, we're going to renew the whole system and generate a new 2,000 or 3,000 keys. So it's not scalable, but it is fast way of encryption. Now, asymmetric encryption is actually kind of slower than symmetric encryption. Why? Because in asymmetric encryption, we have two keys. We have four keys in general. So we have four keys. So basically what happens here is that say we have Alice and we have Bob, like always, right? The same example in all that at all, in all scenarios. Alice and Bob they want to communicate. So Alice has a piece of uh, text or information she wants to encrypt. So basically what she's going to do, she will use Bob public key. Okay, so using Bob public key, she will encrypt the plain text message. The plain text message becomes a ciphertext, as you can see here. So Bob's public key is used. 
to encrypt the main message that's going to be sent by Alice. Now Bob will receive a ciphertext, as you can see, created by Alice. In order for Bob to decrypt the ciphertext into plain text, he's going to use his private key, right? And vice versa, when Bob wants to send a piece of sensitive information to Alice, he's going to need Alice's public key here. So as you can see, guys, there is a pattern to the process. The public key of the recipient is used to encrypt the message. The public key of the recipient in both cases, as you can see here. And the private key of the recipient is used at the same time to decrypt the message. But the thing is, the private key of Bob and the private key of Alice are sensitive and private. No one knows about them. Only public key is known, actually. The thing with, pop, with the public key cryptography, as they call it, or asymmetric encryption, is that it's slower than the uh, symmetric encryption, but it is scalable and more flexible and more secure. So basically, that is a nutshell of both symmetric and asymmetric encryption. Now, more important, let's discuss the tools in this task. So basically, here we have three questions. Now, in the three questions, we're going to encrypt and decrypt files okay using symmetric encryption now in symmetric encryption we have two tools we can use so symmetric encryption tools are gnu privacy guard and open ssl project so let's hop into the attacker machine here dls and of course you want the font bigger i'm going to do that for you So CD rooms and the files of this task are located under crypto intro. Okay, CD task zero two. Okay, so as you can see, we have a cipher text with the extension GPG. And we have another tab, ciphertext with the extension GPG as well. But ciphertext code 02 doesn't have this extension. So what we're going to do, the first question, decrypt the code 01 encrypted using AES-256. So basically AES-256 is a symmetric encryption algorithm. I have divided the encryption algorithms here. DS, 3DS, AS, Bluefish, and Toefish. So basically, essentially here, as you can see, code 01 is an encrypted ciphertext, okay, using the AES algorithm. And this is the key that has been used to encrypt the ciphertext. What we're going to do, we're going to need to decrypt that ciphertext using the GPG, okay? Let's go here and find what you're going to do. Okay, so this is a way to encrypt and this is a way to decrypt. So let's copy the command and paste it here. I'm going to change a couple um, parameters here. So basically the original message, since we are decrypting code 01, I'm going to name it code01.txt and we're going to give the input, which is the cipher text. As you can see, it recognized the algorithm, AES-256, and now it is prompting us for the password or the key. So we copy the key here and we paste it in. Let's get code 01. Okay, so that is the main plain text. And the answer to the question is the third word, which is waste. Next question, decrypt the ciphertext code 02, which was encrypted using AES-256 CPC along with the key using OpenSSL this time. So let me go to OpenSSL and see how we can decipher a ciphertext. That's the command. Heading back here. Okay, we're going to change on all of that. So basically, that's how we specify the algorithm. Dash D for decrypt, dash in is the ciphertext which is already specified in the command and dash out specifies the 
name of the file will contain the plain text or the deciphered ciphertext. And here it is prompting us for the password or the key. We're going to copy that. It's already given. Get code. All right, it's true science of martial arts. Decrypt the file code 03 encrypted using Camilla A256 or Camilla 256 with the key using GPG. Back with the same command. We're going to take this one. And specify code 03.txt as the output and the input will be as you can see the algorithm has already been recognized and we only need to paste in the key to solve the challenge as you can see guys as you can see guys so far as long as the key is known the operation is easy but once the key is absent right it's going to be very difficult and it will require a lot of processing power and brute forcing to crack the key. So basically that's what we call the secret key in the symmetry encryption. That's the key used for encryption and decryption at the same time or simultaneously in symmetry encryption. Now let's go head over to asymmetric encryption challenges and we're going to talk about it. So CD back, CD task 03. Okay, as you can see, we have these pieces of information. We have the cipher text, the private key of Bob, the public key of Alice, and the public key of Bob. Let's go and understand the scenario. Before going to the scenario, guys, as you can see, there's a mention of RSA here. RSA is the public key algorithm, public key encryption algorithm. Okay, and there are many tools used to encrypt and decrypt using RSA, especially RSA CTF tool that if you are uh, a city of solver you might have come across this tool before so let's take about the scenario here. so bob has received the file ciphertext message sent to him from alice you can find the key you need in the same folder what is the first word of the original plain text so bob has received this ciphertext okay most probably oh not most probably it's definitely the ciphertext has been encrypted by alice okay but by what? By using the public key of Bob. So Bob will need to decrypt the ciphertext message using his private key. He is the recipient of the ciphertext. So he's going to use his own private key to decrypt the message. Okay, so how to do that? We're going to find the notes. Okay, decrypting RSA key. Okay. So with OpenSSL, we can decrypt a file with a private key. This is the command. We're going to paste this here. All right, let's see. So OpenSSL dash decrypt in the ciphertext is here. So we're going to specify a ciphertext. Now the key that will be used as an input is Bob private key. So we specify Bob private key here. Private key Bob. And here we can select the name of the file that will contain the decrypted output. Okay, cat decrypted. And this is the cipher text. Well the plain text. Take a look at Bob's private RSA key. What's the last byte of P? Now basically guys, let me go back here. So P, Q, N, E, and D are important factors used in RSA encryption. So basically, normally when we do RSA encryption or decryption, we aim to find the value of these. Okay. So the question here, and these values are stored in the private key. So the question here is, take a look at Bob's private key, RSA key. What's the last byte of P? So if we ls and cat private key Bob. 
this is the private key but th this is not a way to view the private key right and or to extract these uh, parameters so what we have to do we have to use open ssl so how to do that we're going to use this command to display to display the key primes so we call them the key primes and here we use the name finding above private key okay as you can see we were able to display in hexadecimal format of course the values of the key primes okay so prime one is p as you can see here p is prime one prime two is q n is modulus oops what happened man okay and um No idea what happened here. PQ. Okay, I'm gonna fix this later. PQ, NE, and D. As you can see, prime one corresponding to prime one and prime two modulus, public exponent and private exponent respectively. So this that's how we match them. So prime one. The question is, what is the last byte of P, which happens to be prime one, is E7. That's the last byte. And what's the last byte of Q? Q is prime two. And this is the last byte of Q. You're going to need to understand the use of both these tools, OpenSSL and the GNU uh, project to decrypt and decrypt using both symmetric and asymmetric encryption guides. When you are dealing with CTF challenges or maybe cryptographic challenges, um, sometimes you may need that while doing pen testing. If you have uh, come across some sort of RSA private key, you want to decrypt it, you will need to use uh, OpenSSL, you will need to, use the, uh, need to understand the role of these key uh, primes and the factorization and how to find the values of each one of them. So basically guys, that, that's, that was it. I hope you like that and later we will carry over the rest of the cryptographic tasks and see you in the next video.